So guys, welcome to another tutorial. I'm going to be doing another one for the companion AI because the viewer requested me to do an AI to crawl under something. Um, but uh, in this case, because I only have crouch animations, I'm going to use crouching animations. So the thing I would do is just the exact same thing, but you like use you know the the animation and you make this a little bit smaller like that and you'll make them go under but i'm going to do for crouching because i have the animations and i'm going to show you how to set all these up but i already the, did the tutorial and it took me i don't know around 40 minutes that's too big of a video for me to upload it I, like it will take me ages so actually i'm going to repeat the video and you know uh, explain step by step what i did but i already have the code done because I have a lot of back and forth and it, it wasn't really a good video um, because I didn't count uh, some variables that would happen so that's fine so the thing that I did you probably have two triggers over here uh, you can go ahead and delete that you can leave the nav link exactly the same place and you can just pick up the mesh that was here and just drag it above and leave a space like that uh, that's basically everything you need to do if you are confused the things that I deleted is the, those AI jumps that I have over here in the nav links you can go ahead and delete that again leave, leave the nav link and just drag this a little bit up now for the code you can go into the companion AI first thing go into the uh, event begin play before the set timer that you have there create another one drag from it create a new custom event and just call it check and then I'm gonna do a check for space because the way that I'm gonna finding uh, you know a place for crawling through or crouching through I'm gonna do a, a constant check so I'm just you're not gonna have this function yet because you're gonna have to create it for that we're gonna need find an empty space create a new custom event call it check for space and then go up here when you create that timer do it to 0.5 so two times a second loop it create a new event from this uh, little red thing and call that event that check for space now we're going to be checking that 0.5 so two times a second and the way that i do this i'm just going to show you an overview of everything and then i'll explain so the thing that i do here is i do a line trace from the feet of the character uh so up the the size there is three meters so we're going to check from the feet of the player and up for uh, if there's any mesh there with a uh, space for us to crawl through if there is we're going to get the distance of that array if it's bigger than some value that you can you know play around i just use 10 so that's fine uh, we're going to be able to uh, crawl through so if this is true we're going to set the capsule component uh, of height and then we're going to add a local offset for the mesh and i'm going to explain that um, when i'm explaining in detail because the, there's a problem between the capsule component and the mesh then you're going to set a new variable that you're going to create so you can go ahead create a new variable call it make it a boolean it's going to be probably by default call it is crouching the spelling is wrong i know don't worry about that drag the cap the the character movement and then drag from it do set wall set max walk speed and this is going to be the speed of your the movement of your character while uh, it is crouching or crawling so I just set my mine for 200 and the ma so now I'm going to start explaining by detail so everything I did so first of all I'm going to go into the viewport and first of being the first thing that I did was add the component arrow and I just call it start lock so this is going to be the starting location for our uh, line trace and I just drag it into the direction of the feet probably a little bit above and I just drag it over here, you know, from wherever the hell it is. I think it spawns in the center of the character. Drag it from over here. And then that's everything we need to do on the components. It's really simple. Just make sure uh, you have something that looks like this. Basically on the direction of its end, uh, but starting uh, in the Z of the feet. Going to the event graph again. Our check for space. So get that start lock er uh, arrow. Drag it into the event graph. From it, get the world location because we're going to need to get um, the Z value and the way that I do that is that I break the vector so drag from the get world location and call break vector and then from the Z just drag from it and drag a multiply you want to multiply uh, float multiply float 
and this is basically going to be the the maximum uh, distance gap that you can call, uh, crawl or crouch through so I just made it 300 just to make it like a really big value because it's really bigger than the character this is 3 meters so just make this whatever it is uh, in your game that you want you can make this a meter or half a meter depends if you actually want to crouch or uh, crawl through then I'm gonna drag from the end I'm gonna make a vector because now we're gonna need to add together uh, the end location of our line trace so we want the same max and the same y, only we want the new z that we found with the multiply node. So the, the line trace is going to go up and we want to get the same max and y but with the new z that is up there. And yeah, so you can, for getting the line trace, you can get line trace y channel. Get that. Then I just have to draw the debug type for duration for us to see what happens. I, love, I leave the trace channel at visibility, it's the default. The start of the array is get roll location directly from the arrow. And what that does, is I can show you right away. So play is going to do that line trace that you see there. You can see him crawling through. But this line trace is basically what we just created. And it's going to be checking two times a second. From the outlet, now we're going to need to break this. So we get uh, information. I'm going to get the distance. The distance is the size of the um, basically the line trace from the start of it to whatever it hits and if this is bigger than 10 obviously this is going to be the minimum gap distance so if you don't want them to crawl through like a space uh, with uh, one centimeter obviously we're not going to want to you just do uh, bigger than so in a real game you want this like I don't know 50 centimeters you only want a guy to crawl through under something that is 50 centimeters because he, he probably wouldn't fit but I just did 10 for you know it's just to show then I'm gonna go into and drag from this uh, branch then if it's true we're gonna be wanting to uh, now do something with our capsule component because if we go into the viewport our capsule component is what derives where we collide and if we try to do this without adjusting the, the, the capsule it's just gonna hit the wall and it's not gonna go under it's just gonna be stuck there so you can see in the shape you have your capsule half height and the capsule radius, the capsule radius. We're going to be using the first one, the half height. The default is 96, but you can change this and see how the capsule changes. And you can see, well, uh, if you just leave that, like this, the guy is going to be kind of floating because it's not adjusting on his feet. So I'm not like this actually looks, you know, pretty fine for the size of a guy crawling, but, um, you know, the, the capsule component when you drive from the capsule half height is going to be going to the center of the actor it's not going to start from the feet so it, as it gets smaller it gets uh, closer to the center of the character that's really bad because the guy is going to be floating like this so that's what I, uh, the next thing that's going to come next so go back to the event graph you set the capsule half height so drag the capsule component and set capsule alpha height. Uh, capsule alpha height, there it is. And I'm going to set this for 76. Now, this 76 value I just got from the, the animation size. So, what I did is that basically, uh, sorry, I went into the viewport, I gone into the skeletal mesh, and I just changed this to use animation asset. And I just got the crouch. And I just basically picked up uh, our capsule component and I just saw the size so which size will basically adapt to the size of the, the actor but because the capsule uh, does like goes into the, um, the center of the actor the guy is going to be out of the capsule component so we actually going to need to get a map there to actually see this so this will basically be the capsule size for this animation so this is basically let's see 75 and I have 76, so it's basically the same thing. That's where I get the value. So if you are doing like crawling through, like the the person asked me to do this, you just get that animation and you just adjust this uh, to whatever is the crawling animation, like uh, whatever the, the actor occupies. And then you just use that value over here. So it's really that simple. Now I'm going to put this back so use animation blueprint 
and just put 96 on the off height oh yeah and go back below there you go and now uh, you can see that for me to actually make this be inside the capsule component I need to move the character up that's what I do with the add local offset so drag the mesh and call add local offset it's this node over here and when you do that you just gonna be adding values to its position so X Y and Z so what I do here is that I have 20 actually test around to see this value so when I make the capsule component smaller the amount of uh, space that I have to move my character up is 20 units over in the Z so you can also see that when you are you no know, depends on your animation so you just go over here and you set that Z over here and then that animate that variable that you created is scratching a boolean just drag it over here set it you can do that by just dragging it in and pressing set is scratching uh, set it to true and then the max walk speed get the character movement again set max walk speed and I set this to 200 based on my animation it kind of feels right now but what it, whatever what if it is false now you can see that I just drag the delay from here this delay is basically because uh, because the, the arrow is uh, in front of the player when you get to the end of the gap that you're crawling or crouching through these these line trace is going to start eating and it's not going to eat the crawl it's going to eat like infinite space it's going to go and it's not going to eat anything but uh, you that the actual mesh is going to actually be in the gap still so the capsule component will actually regain its size and will get stuck uh, in the in the gap so then the character will be stuck so this delay so we give time to the character to get out of the hole and then we actually set the back the collision size and stuff so my for my animation and my speed I found that two seconds is perfectly fine and then I just did the same thing that I did up here I just copied this control C control V down here uh, the off height is the default that you start with which is 96 then the mesh uh, now the Z of it because we went 20 up we're going to go 20 down now so we get back to zero basically so you just put a minus between the 20 uh, before the 20 sorry is crunching you can just copy and paste make it false and copy and paste the character movement and make it the default which is 600 in the case of this character max walk speed 600 over here and that's pretty much it for the actual code of this hopefully you guys understood everything I'm sorry for um, you know be explaining this after so it's I know that's not very good but hopefully everything is understood any doubt you know leave them in the comments now for the animations go into into your AI NMBP so go into the mesh uh, you got your NM class over here you can click on this little thing to search it and get it into your content browser double click that open now let me go into the event graph first so what I'm going to do, go into your companion AI, get is crouching. The not this one because this one is the actual that is well spelled. Uh, it's the one that um, it's coming default with the character. Actually, I did not use this one. Search for your default one. So get is crouching but not well spelled. Right click, promote to variable over here, and then just set it just before the is. Uh, oh no sorry this is the shooting uh, before the easy mirror so you want to just do this when you are dragging from the companion AI and just put it between his shooting and his in air uh, here so like this actually to have this one uh, no actually sorry I'm getting confused when you right click and you promote a new variable this one is going to appear just connect it between the shooting and his in air and connect this one up this should probably already be connected so just make sure it looks like this basically compile that and save that go back into your uh, locomotion now you can you probably only can add this part over here if you are following the tutorials just drag from the walk get a new state and then click drag from over back into the walk so you can get a new uh, return like uh, condition now for the condition to go into the crouching you go and make it uh, drag from the is crouching and connected into the transition and the one that is go goes back to walk you just do the same thing but drag from its crouching and drag a not boolean 
So if we're not crouching, we're gonna go back into walk. And the actual crouch animation is the one that I found. So it's the crouch walk for rifle iron sights. It comes with uh, the, the like the start and impact that we imported in the first or second video. I don't remember. And yeah, I think this is everything that we need. I hope I'm not forgetting anything. I, I think not. So now if you play in your own machine and your character should be going below the thing and going, um, you know, getting out the other side and it will still follow you. There you go, and it will do the same thing. Logic if you have the enemies. Now I'm going to try and see if I go back. There you go, he's crunched through and coming back to me. There you go. He actually got a little bit crunched uh, because he went on diagonal. So that's fine. You can see it works and it will, it will keep following me. So that's it. Uh, again, sorry for not, you know, actually making the code uh, and explaining as I make it. Uh, but again, uh, I took some, I made some some mistakes and it took so much time and I actually couldn't upload that. It, my internet is not fast for that. So yeah, hopefully you understood everything I said. Any doubts or anything, leave them in the comments, it's fine. Any more suggestions? Thank you my, thank you guys so much for the, the guys that are putting suggestions on the comments. Uh, it really helps things get moving. And yeah, I really like to help you guys. So if you liked it, you know, uh, like and subscribe and uh, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye bye